So when we first got this house, I saw the amazing potential of this backyard. But my, one of my first thoughts was how in the heck are we gonna be able to irrigate this whole thing and build all these garden beds and make sure that even while we're gone, that things get irrigated. So really what I was about to do was develop a simple short-term solution that I could do at least for this growing season that I knew would need to be replaced over time was something that cost me probably about 75 bucks. And now I'm able to irrigate the entire backyard. Let me show you how. So as you might be able to see, I already have some of these sprinklers going right here. I have them connected to an automated timer that I have connected to this spigot that you'll see right there in the background. I'll show you a closer look, but in short, what happens is that at a certain time each day, they'll go off, which will allow this spigot to be able to spit out water and irrigate my garden beds. I'll show you what I mean. So one of the biggest things for me that helped me understand this problem better is trying to understand where this water was actually going to come from. So we didn't have any spigots out here in the backyard, right? And so what that means is I need to pull water from the nearest pipe or the most accessible pipe toward the front of the house and run it back here. How am I gonna do that easily, affordably, and without much professional help, especially for a novice like me who's never really done much plumbing in his life? The answer for me was pretty simple. I actually use PEX, which is a new popular type of piping that's actually flexible, it's a type of plastic, that's rated for outdoor, although it shouldn't get much UV exposure because that could degrade the PEX. But over time, you'll see issues if you're just trying for a short term and in the season, I would highly recommend this setup. So let's actually start all the way over here. I'm at the side of my house. We don't have much property. We're over here in the suburbs of LA. But what you can see right here is the main source of water that it was tapping in from. So this pipe used to go to the front yard to manage the sprinklers out there. We actually put in drought tolerant stuff. Don't need to worry about that. And so I was able to tap into this pipe, sort of take it over and run that PEX. You'll see the connectors right here. Um, those are just some simple PEX connectors. And you'll see that the pipe, the PEX pipe, starts to go underground. You'll have to excuse the mess. We've clearly been neglecting this for the last season. But you'll see right here again, that PEX pipe, that white pipe, that flexible pipe, starts to go underground. I buried it right here in this sort of side of the house garden bed. And it'll take you all the way, still buried, still buried. Man, we really got to clean this stuff up happens to me every season still buried still buried you can see that it starts to poke up right here right that's part of just kind of how the plumbing works how the water works all that kind of stuff but you want to keep it buried to avoid as much uv as possible still buried and then this is where it sort of starts to kind of come out this is when i knew that this was not going to be a long-term solution but again it was the best solution for what i was trying to do i just wanted a quick simple affordable way of getting water to the backyard so i could irrigate all my plants especially automatically and this was just going to have to do for the time so still going still going this is where i re-buried it under these rocks and you can see that pex connector right there it's an elbow piece and it turns a 90 degree right turn right here where that pex is going to continue to be buried until we go and we heard our first spigot so let's go see that okay we made it to our first spigot and so i have some of these rocks here because again that pex is a flexible material um sort of wanted to keep it upright kind of leaned it right there maybe protect it a little bit from uv rays but this is where we have a shark bite spigot shark bite is a brand nice brand i recommend them and this is where i have it connected to an automatic I think it's in Soma timer. And as you could already see right there, it's connected to the valve fitting as if this is kind of like a hose. So what this guy does, it's automated, okay? So I can set a timer for it, or I can just simply click that button, either or. But what happens is that when it's activated, it'll effectively act as if the gate inside opens so that water can come through. You can have a hose connected to this. I personally got an irrigation kit off of Amazon that was a really good deal. But when this timer goes off, the water is allowed through. It's allowed through this hose right here that I also buried underneath these rocks that's starting to pop up. And then from that, I have these smaller irrigation nozzles that come out and can water these garden beds. That's the main concept. That's the main idea of how this backyard works. Automatically, when I'm gone, during the day and in a very efficient way whereas a regular hose is not as efficient as using a setup like this 
As you can see, I still need to set it up a little bit better. Not every part of the garden bed is getting irrigated, but it's enough for a low cost, efficient solution. You can then twist these nozzles and adjust and make it exactly as you need it for your garden bed. Now here's the thing. We got quite a bit of garden to irrigate back here. We're not gonna let everything come through on just this one spigot. That wouldn't make any sense. The water pressure would be too low. You wouldn't be able to get enough water out. So I needed a different solution. So what I did was I continued that PEX. As you can see, it's already popping up from the rocks. Again, just from how the water works and the pressure and all that. Have it go through this sort of 90 degree turn here on a curve. And then I have it irrigated to spigot number two. So here's the thing, here's spigot number two. Works the same way, has the same kind of system. I just bought a few of these. Now, when I turn this guy on, he's not gonna have as much pressure as he would if that guy were off. So this is what I do. I irrigate the backyard in 10 minute segments where each of these get to take their turn so that they get to benefit from the highest pressure. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on. He'll irrigate through right there. And then as I have all this just above the surface, since I didn't get the chance to finish it, all the irrigation will come out. But as you see, it's kind of just leaking, right? There's really not much that's coming out here. So this uh, spout is barely hitting. You could tell by where this spout is hitting, where the water is coming out, that how much pressure it has. Let's actually keep going. I'll show you the last one, and then I'll show you what happens when we do them one at a time. Got this beautiful peach tree that's coming in. Very excited for that season. Got a jujube tree right here that I'm also really excited about. But let's go back to the final part. I took out all of these uh, little spouts, these water spouts, because I wasn't ready to have them in. I didn't want to place them quite yet. I kind of want to redo this whole system. But in short, here's the last component. Here's the last spigot. And when I turn this guy on, looks like these actually get a little bit more water than the other ones do. But this is in short how the system works. I'd have these in the garden beds, have automatic irrigation. That's how the process works. Let me go ahead and turn this guy off. And let's come back over here. We can clearly see where that pressure is, right? We can see where those uh, little water marks are coming out on the soil. We can see that these are also pretty low. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this guy off. So after about 10 minutes of automation, or again, all you need to do is click that button. When that guy goes off, I'm sure you'll be able to see that these are now more powerful. Maybe not by much, but enough so that there's new markings, this water pressure is higher, it can reach more, it can irrigate more, and it could sustain a lot more. So this sprinkler over here that was barely making a trickle, barely a trickle, is now successfully irrigating this beautiful pomelo tree that we got going right here. And that, in short, is how you easily, cheaply, and effectively irrigate a backyard just by about 75 bucks, uh, some PEX, some flexible piping, and an irrigation kit off of Amazon. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If you're trying to do a low cost, effective way of irrigating your backyard, bringing water to your backyard, I'd highly recommend a PEX and automated timer solution where you just use irrigation kits that you could buy online. Very simple, very cost effective. Do keep in mind, you will have to replace your system. But for me to install rigid PVC piping, dig up all that trenching versus throwing in some PEX on a hot day over the summer, I opted for that PEX option. Very happy I did it. I would do it again, but I'm also really looking forward to this summer uh, or the upcoming season where I can go through and replace the entire thing. If you want to see how I upgrade the backyard, if you want to keep uh, up to date with sort of what I do back here in this urban gardening that I have down here in LA, uh, feel free to follow, feel free to subscribe, uh, whatever platform you're watching on, you know how to keep in touch, but appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next one.